What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video, we're going to use a series of tools in order to create a textured dome that also has some raised pieces on it as well. So before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. SketchUp Essentials course is a course I put together to give more of a start to finish SketchUp training. So we start with the basic tools and then we go all the way into uh, more advanced things like interior design modeling, modeling for layout, and for an intro to photorealistic rendering. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to take your SketchUp training to the next level, make sure you check that out at thesketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I had done a video a while ago, and I'll link to it up above um, and also in the notes down below about um, basically creating a patterned dome shape using the drape tool, um, which is one of the tools that's included in the SketchUp sandbox tools. And so we're going to start with that, and then we're going to use a couple extensions in order to add a textured or a texture to the face. So there's also another great video on this from the guys over at the Egypt SketchUp community, which I'm going to link to in the notes down below as well, um, where they create kind of a painted dome. And they approach the UV mapping a little bit differently, but if you're looking for another great video on this method, I will link to that in the notes down below as well. And so it, to start off, let's go ahead and just draw a circle. So I'm just going to draw a 24-sided circle. And it doesn't really matter what your radius is. Um, you're just going to draw a circle. And then the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find the center of that circle. And you're just going to draw a line up. And usually what I do in this case, because I have some trouble getting this to lock to the axis, is I'll draw a little, um, I call it a canvas, but basically just a face that you can draw this curve along. And so I'm just going to use the arc tool and I'm just going to draw a curve in here. So when I draw the curve in here, this gives me a face and I'm going to erase out the extra that I can extrude in a circle in order to create my dome. And so the first thing I'm going to do before I do that is I'm going to double click on this base piece and I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy up above. So just double click on this, tap the M key, click on this point and tap the control key to turn copy mode on. So what that's going to do is that's going to create a copy up above. And this is what we're going to use. We're going to use this to generate our pattern, or in this case, just our uh, kind of dome pieces that we're going to drape back down on here. But um, for right now, we're going to go back down here. And you can just click on this circle, then activate the Follow Me tool and click on this face. And that'll extrude this in a circle so that you have this dome shape. And so I'm just going to right click on this and reverse the faces so the white faces are up. And then I'm just going to make a couple quick changes. So I'm going to go up to this top piece and I'm going to use the offset tool to offset this in about two inches. And then the other thing I'm going to do, and we're going to keep this real simple in this case. So I'm just going to draw a line to the center. And then I'm just going to use the offset again offset tool again and I'm just going to do a two inch offset and when I do that you can see how I get kind of a double offset on this edge right here all you're going to do is just continue these lines out and then you can erase out this extra piece in here and so now what we'll have and actually probably what we're going to do is we're going to do a one inch offset and I'll talk about the reason for that in a second so we're going to do a one inch offset here and then do the same thing just draw these lines out so that they intersect right here and erase out your extra. So then what we're going to do is we're going to select this piece and we're going to use the rotate tool in copy mode to create a couple copies of it. So just come in here and double click on this piece in order to select it. Activate the rotate tool by tapping the Q key and then come click on this center point. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this in a circle. but what we want to do is we want to activate copy mode so that we create a copy. So you've got all this selected, this tool is active, just tap the control key to turn copy mode on. And then I'm going to click on this point right here and I'm going to type in times three and hit the enter key. When you type in times three what that does is that creates three copies instead of just one copy. And then you can come out and you can erase out these extra lines. Whoops. So that this is all just one uninterrupted face. So you can see how now if I click on this, this is an uninterrupted face. 
And so once we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use the drape tool in order to drape this down over our dome. So that's located within your sandbox tools. And if you don't see your sandbox tools, you may need to go up into your extension manager and enable that. And if you don't see the toolbar, you can just right click and go down and click on the sandbox toolbar. But what we're going to do is we're going to drag a box across this object. Then we're going to go up and we're going to select the option for drape. And then we're just going to click on our dome shape. And you can see how when we did that, basically what this did is this draped this straight down onto this face. So that's why we created that copy straight up so we could just uh, easily come in here and basically drape this along this face. And so now what I'm going to do is there's two things we're going to do. We're going to use an extension called joint push pull in order to come in here and give this thickness. But before we do that, I think I'm going to apply my texture. And so what we want to do in this case, instead of what I've done in the previous tutorial, is we actually want to apply a texture to this. And in this case, what I've done is I've found a stained glass um, window texture that we're going to use and I'll link to this in the notes below so it's licensed it's free for commercial use and all of that stuff so we're going to bring that down so you're just going to download that image and then you're going to go up to file import and you're just going to find that file and you're going to import it as a texture so you're going to go down you're going to click the little button for texture here then you can just double click on this and so what that's going to do is that's going to bring this texture in here and you're just going to come click on your face and you're just going to kind of size this so that it's close and you can see how already it came in in the wrong place and it doesn't get mapped right if we use it. So you can see what I did is when that got brought in it showed up in my in model section of my materials and so what I did is I just clicked on this and then clicked on this face and so you can see how that doesn't get brought in properly initially so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an extension that I've talked about before it's called through paint so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe this back out so I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna set the material to default and paint over this because it wasn't really what we wanted anyway and then we're going to go into through paint and remember this is an extension that you need to install on your computer I'll link to it in the notes below and you may need to go in through the Fredo tools launcher in order to get it and then through paint will be the last option in here so when you activate through paint what that's going to allow you to do that's going to allow you to do some different things with your material so I guess the first thing we'll do is we'll just reapply this material to this face and then with through paint active we're going to come in here and we're going to use our UV painting options. And so we'll start off and we'll do this quad mesh UV. And you need to have this material selected. But you can basically click on this face. And when you click on this face, if you have the quad mesh UV, then this is going to try to UV map this using that quad mesh UV option. So there's a couple other options in here as well. You could try the natural UV and see what that comes up with. So in this case, natural UV seems to map that a little bit better. You could also try to do it with projected. Um, in this case, I don't think projected is the right choice. It seems like natural UV is giving us the best mapping. And so once you've placed this on this face, you can click on the face and through paint will give you an option to click and move this around. So, you know what? We're probably going to use the quad mesh UV actually. So, through paint's going to give you the option to translate this and move this around. And you can see how as I do this, this is kind of deforming everything at the top, but what it's doing is it's basically trying to UV map this to this face in order to uh, find the best possible mapping for this. And so, what you can do is you can click on this face and you can kind of place this and then you can use these little scaling options in order to try to scale this to fit it the way that you want it to look within this object. And so you have to kind of play around with this a little bit to see just what a, which one of these seems to work the best. So there's also some options in here to kind of rotate these textures as well. So you just kind of want to place it and just use these tools to kind of get the best fit that you can find for this texture. And so in this case, this one's a little bit rough because this is a circular texture, but the shape isn't really circular. So just kind of do your best. 
But one of the things I really like about this tool is it just makes everything so easy to map. Like you can see how I'm just able to bring this in here and moving this around and adjusting it. Like it's not difficult at all. It just makes everything really easy. And that's kind of how Fredo 6's extensions are. They have a lot of different options, but they really work really well. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave this as is. So I'm gonna go ahead and click exit. So once I have this in here, I'm gonna close out a through pane. And what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm actually gonna delete out these extra faces and then I'm just gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode to copy this around in a circle. So I'm gonna activate this face by clicking on it. I'm gonna tap the Q key and I'm gonna come this, find this uh, center point right here. And I'm also gonna tap the up button to lock this to the blue axis. And then I'm just gonna move my mouse along the green axis here. And then I'm gonna tap the control key to activate copy mode. And I'm gonna click and I'm gonna type in times three. And what that does is that that creates three copies of this texture. And so in this case, you, if you were really trying to get something that mapped perfectly on here, there might be a different way that you want to do it. Um, in this case, in this case, I think this maps pretty well. And you could also try to map this on this whole face before you drape everything. So there's a lot of different ways that you could approach this. But in this case, for me, I think this is kind of good enough. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use another extension from Fredo 6 called Joint Push Pull. And what Joint Push Pull does is it allows you to push pull curved surfaces. And so you can see how these are different surfaces than this one. So if I was to come in and hide these, for example, then you can see how this is just a face that I have in here that hasn't merged with these faces. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the first option in joint push pull, which is just joint push pull, and I'm just gonna single click and then move my mouse up, and I'm gonna click again. So in this case, that's a three quarter inch offset. But you can see how what that does is that allows me to give thickness to the rest of these parts and pieces. So you can use this to create kind of a frame that your glass would sit in. And so once you understand the principles behind this, you could use this to basically create whatever you wanted to um, between being able to UV, UV map the materials and to drape things like patterns along here. Um, it really gives you a whole bunch of different options for things that you could create. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Um, what tools would you use to do something like this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.